Okay. Uh, thanks. Thank you everyone for coming along. Um, first off, I just want to know what sort of people have got here. So, how many of you guys are in, actually in the industry, VFX wise? Ooh, look at it, and I guess the rest of you are kind of just wondering what it's all about and stuff. Cool. Okay, brilliant. Any, I mean, the ones that are in VFX, are you guys in production or artists or what, like, you guys? Cool. And yourself? Yeah. Um, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, um, okay, well, that's the agenda for today. Um, we've got two hours, but the thing is, that I don't really want to do this as like, you know, sort of like a strict class as such, because it's like, well, what time is it? It's like after work now. So I'm going to try and keep this as much as informal as possible. So as I'm talking, if you guys have anything specific, any questions you see, or something you don't understand what I'm saying, something that doesn't make clear, just stick your hand up and, you know, we'll answer it. It's, it's that sort of informal environment I'm going to create here. So I'm just going to give you a little introduction of who I am and just pretty much go through these points. And I'm going to show you examples and, um, again, you know, just ask questions. I really encourage you guys to use this time to just ask questions. We're going to have a Q&A session at the end, but to be honest with you, it's just, you might end up forgetting what the questions are, because I know I would if I'm just sitting in and talk. So, that's a little bit about myself, uh, if, you, if you don't know. Um, I started off compositing, so I've been in the industry just over 10 years. I started off in video games, doing game cinematics. Uh, because back then there wasn't really easy route to get into visual effects. There wasn't you know, a place like Skip Studios, for example. It was very niche. So I started off doing cinematic for games, uh, but always had a love and passion for film. And then you know, six years later, or maybe five years later, whatever, I uh, end up having to go, end up going to film because I realised there there is a route in film, and you know, and it was compositing. I loved compositing, and um, so I, I started working in a company called the Moving Pitch Company. I uh, worked on films like 10,000 BC, Sweeney Todd. I started off low, you know, started off doing red scoping, started doing paint out. Even though I worked in cinematics as a senior artist, I still went and started from the bottom and worked my way up. Luckily, because I had composting experience, I was able to jump through quite fast and not spend a year doing paint and roto. I actually got through within three or four months. Um, so, yeah, these are some of the films I worked on. Some of you recognize, you can see there's a mix of feature films, um, television, American Story Boss, which like VFX Supervisor, Parade's End, Planet Dinosaur, and a lot of these are supervisors as well. And of course, Worked in commercials, music promo, and anything that's moving picture needs visual effects. Okay, I'm going to stop talking to you tonight. <laughs> and I think it's really important if you if you do want to become a visual effects supervisor, or you want to become a VFX producer, or get into some sort of visual effects management. Personally, I think it's important that you work in the trenches, as they say, because how else are you going to be able to budget for shows if you don't know what's involved? So luckily for me, I, I worked in the trenches, I worked on a variety of shows, I was able to move up to visual effects supervising and end up producing later on. So that's me in a nutshell. Uh, okay, so I always get this question, what is the role of a VFX supervisor? I remember before I started out, I used to think VFX supervising was just people that go on set, people that go on location, people that... Um, I hang around sets, take measuring you know, measurements, take some photos, and you know, work with a director, and that's VFX supervising. Bullshit. That's not VFX supervising. That's on set visual effects supervising. There's a difference. What I learned, you know, very quickly and probably the hardest way, is the VFX supervisor is responsible for the creative and technical decisions made on the show. You are there from the start of the show, and when I say the start of the show, I'm talking pre-production. Even sometimes when you're bidding for the show, when you're pitching for the show. You haven't won the show yet, but you're pitching for it. You're there at the start. And then you're right there onto the shoot, and you're right there till closing time, till you deliver the show. Um, if you're on a massive film, you're sometimes involved in picking up the awards and stuff, or help promote the film, um, which is like, there's a film called Ender's Game. I don't know if you guys know about from Ender's Game. Well, that was produced by Digital Domain. So a lot of the visual effects uh, supervisors end up help promote the film, because it's a co-production, which I'm gonna to touch onto as well. Um, my day-to-day -day role as a VFX supervisor, once we won the job that is, is I work closely with the director. Um, the director is foremost my main point of contact. And you know, the director first would give me a script, they tell me to read it, and I'll break it up, and I'll figure out what can be done in VFX, and what, be, what can be done in special effects, you know, pyrotechnics, stuff that don't require the computer. Um, but the most important thing I found doing my job as a VFX suit is what was cool 
on the last project isn't cool today. So you can't keep rehashing the same techniques. The thing I love about my job is I'm constantly on the lookout for new techniques. I'm constantly on the lookout for new technology, new ways of doing things. Usually the reason for that is because I need to get it done quicker and cheaper. It's a reality. Budgets are shrinking, ambitions are getting bigger. So that's my challenge to be a big supervisor. I also dipped into the role of VFX producing. Now, they're two different roles, and they should never be confused about between the two. So like I told you, the supervisor is responsible for the overall show in terms of creative and technical decisions made and running the show. But the supervisor cannot do his or her job without the role of the VFX producer. It's a marriage. They both feed off each other. The VFX producer is responsible for making sure, making sure the show delivers on time, on budget. Now it's easier said than done, but when you have a budget that constantly evolves, like you bid for the show and the show's like, I don't know, 200 grand worth of visual effects, and then after the shoot, the VFX supervisors come back and go, oh, you know, we made a few changes, you know, the, it was a hectic shoot, and uh, we had to shoot more plates, and what was originally, you know, 60 shots in the show is now 120. As a VFX producer, you have to figure out how are you going to either ask for more money, most of the time they're going to say no, we've spent the money on the shoot, you have to figure out how you're going to use the existing budget to make that show happen. And you don't want to disappoint the client because you, you want repeat business, right? So it's really tough being a VFX producer because not only are you responsible for making sure the client's happy, you're also responsible for how the team operates in terms of financially. So when you're hiring new artists like you know, compositors, CGI artists, and so on, you're working on their rates and the producer deals with that because you don't want to hire someone that's on like a phenomenal big studio rate and then you don't have much money for other people. So it's about being smart. And VFX producers are often involved in recruiting as well. How I ended up VFX producing um, is on smaller shows. I don't think, if I was working on a big massive show, sort of like a show like Gravity, for example, there's no way a supervisor and a producer could do the same, same role, because it's a huge show. You have multiple supervisors, multiple producers. You have a producer that deals with a sequence. But on a smaller show, say like, a broadcast TV show. So I worked at a fantastic company called Jellyfish Pictures. You guys know Jellyfish Pictures? Amazing, amazing company. And they do a lot of broadcast shows. But it's a very boutique company. The whole work ethic is very boutique. Which means that when I end up supervising, I end up costing out shots. Only because the client's right next to me and going, cool, huh? that sounds really cool. Um, how much did it cost? And instead of me going, oh, let me go and get the producer, I have to think on the spot. Otherwise, you know, that day that I delayed getting back to the client, he might end up, end up, he or she might end up going somewhere else and they win the job. So, and it made sense for me to move into BFF producing as well as supervising on a smaller show because it's intimate, it's a small team, there wasn't many shots, and um, the whole structure of the project, broadcast, is pretty much contained as opposed to a bigger feature film where it isn't contained. So that's how I end up BFF producing. And you're going to find a lot of supervisors are becoming supervisor stroke producers. And that's exciting because if you, know, if you are a small boutique company, you might not have the budget to hire a VFX producer to come on. Mainly because you're a small company, you, have, you, know, you want to keep your overhead small. But at the same time, the project you're talking to, usually your bid turnarounds are a day. You've got a day to turn around a bid. So you, you don't want to hire a producer on board, and then really you don't need a producer. So, and also, if I'm making a decision on how to shoot something, whether I want to use motion capture or whether I want to use keyframe animation, whether I should scan, digitally scan the environment using LiDAR, or should I build the environment using photogrammetry or build it using reference images? These are all things that have cost. Everything you do in visual effects, whether it's a single pixel paint out, there is like a cost involved in that. And, that. and that involves producing. And that's how I end up becoming a supervisor and producer. And you're going to find a lot of supervisors now producers. You're going to see a lot of credits in films or smaller productions where they have producers and supervisors. Yeah, this company called Uncharted Territory. I don't know if you know the company. They did the film 2012 for Ronan Emmerich, they did Anonymous, they did White House Down. Um, and they have an internal team, and the supervisor there, Mark Eichbert, he's also a producer. So, you know, it's becoming a trend because of the ambitious shows, and because there's a lot of shows happening every day. So, supervisors end up jumping into VFX producing. But on a bigger show, they are separate. But they do, they do sort of like clash together, and I'll explain that. I'm going to show you some examples of sort of visual effects work I've done over the years in terms of independent. Now, all the visual effects type experiences I'm telling you here and the techniques I'm going to be telling you about and how to run a show from a production point of view, these are done on independent scale. I feel like the guys over at Plan Focus MC, they've already done their talks about the big budget movies. 
I also have a feeling maybe some of you guys want to go and do your own films. Maybe you want to go and direct and produce your own films, or whether you have production companies. I feel like these are the sort of thing I think production companies can pretty much take on themselves if they know how to produce the effects content. So working on chain here, stuff I've done on independent, which means that you guys can do this as well.